Hello and welcome to another <laughs> to another of my moustache musings. So tonight I'm going to tell you about an interesting conversation I had with an old friend of mine whom I haven't heard in a, in a long time. We, we were college mates. His name is Kim Seng. <clears throat> and uh, he sent me a message and the message read just this short message it said Pepper went a good time to call you and you know when uh, your friend sends you a message like that it's usually uh, concerning multi-level marketing or insurance <laughs> now I know that most people will be hesitant to uh, reply or even to talk to that old friend but not me if my friend is uh, selling insurance or selling multi-level marketing direct selling products <clears throat> I will still give them the time to talk to me because I have been a salesman before and uh, I, I know how difficult it is to get appointments to meet potential clients and customers so I always give my time you know you know how the telephone marketeers who would call you and yeah most most I know <clears throat> I know some friends who just say not interested like at the moment they they know that it's uh, an, an unsolicited call they'll just say not interested and put the phone down but not me I usually would let them explain their product and if I'm not interested I'll just say no thank you it's uh, really not for me and uh, uh, thank you so much have a nice day I, I'm usually very courteous and nice to them because I know what it feels like to be a salesman who has to cari makan doing sales and hitting sales targets anyway back to my story with Kim Singh so we chatted over the phone and uh, he wanted to know why I had lost my faith, why I stopped being a Christian. Now, Kim Teng, strangely enough, is not a Christian. But we, we, we've known each other since college days. And <clears throat> I remember back in college, uh, there used to be some Christians, students, who would come and fetch us because they had cars so they would come and fetch us and um, to fetch us to church which is really nice of them lah. there was I remember there was a husband and wife named Andrew and Serene then there was one uh, student called Michael and there was another one named George and there was also a, a girl she was an Australian girl but I cannot remember her name now. <laughs> In any case, <clears throat> I found the conversation between myself and Kim Seng interesting because for several reasons. The first reason is it kind of enforced what uh, I, I, I already know and it kind of enforced my stand. So while he was asking me the questions, I kept asking myself, is the response I'm giving him true or is it a canned response? Is it, uh, do I still believe in, in, that, in that answer? Has it changed? Am I questioning it? And so I thought that was, that was really good. It's like it acted as a self-check. And another reason, another reason would be, um, yeah, another reason was I, I thought that Kim Seng was really good because he had asked these kinds of questions and he didn't get a satisfactory answer. So even though we all went to the same church to, together back in college. 
But um, he never became a Christian. I, on the other hand, the dum dum that I that I was, I believed it wholesale. Wanting to be a man of faith and living in faith, so trusting God a hundred percent. So I just believed, you know, without much evidence, without much proof. But not not Kim Kim Seng. So that was a, another interesting thing, I thought. And and so yeah, so because Kim Seng never got proper answers, so he he never became a Christian. And the kind of questions that he was asking back then were the questions that we talked about. We talked we talked for a good three hours until my phone actually ran out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I would like to tell you uh, some of the questions. I thought I thought they were, they were very interesting. It ranges from how Adam and Eve's children committed incest to populate the earth, how um, preachers would ask for money to buy a private jet, and. Yeah, we talked about quite a few things, but I'm 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 just going to tell you what we discussed, uh, but in no particular order. It's just as I remember it, I'll just uh, tell you lah. So one of the questions he asked was, Adam and Eve's children did they commit incest? So the Bible doesn't quite say that. Now this. If you if you can believe that the Bible is true, that God had created Adam and Eve, then you would have this very strange problem, wouldn't you? That the people who populated the earth um, were brothers and sisters of uh, children of Adam and Eve, or even worse, <laughs> Cain and Abel had sex with their mother. So whichever way you look at it, it's just terrible, lah. So Kim Seng had a problem with that, but, but I only told him what I understood the Bible to explain. So there's no evidence for this, etc. But one of the things that I told him was, don't you think it's funny that God knew that Adam would sin and um, eat of the tree, the forbidden fruit, and doom the entire human race from this time all the way to today and all the way to the future. Seriously, if you, if you think about it, God is supposed to know all things, but apparently He knew that Adam and Eve would sin and therefore they will be cast out of the Garden of Eden and they will have to suffer, death, uh, they'll have to work by the sweat of their brow, that's what the Bible says. They'll have to, they would not be under God's protection anymore and enjoy the Garden of Eden where they had dominion over all the animals. And then all of a sudden now, if you meet a tiger, the tiger would eat you. But if you were in the Garden of Eden, you had power over the tiger. So, yeah. So we had a good laugh about that. And then we talked about how the, there are only one billion Christians uh, today. So that's one-seventh of the world's population. There are about 7.5 billion people. So, according to the statistics, if you add all the Christians together, including the Catholics and the Protestants and the Mormons, Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses, etc. I mean, all the groups. I mean, these these groups do not do not recognize each other as Christians. But let's put them all into the same group and call them Christians, and they only total to one billion. People only. 
Well, I asked Kim Seng, isn't it strange? Like, wouldn't you think it's strange? Or, sorry, wouldn't you think it's bad if your son came back from school and told you that they've only got 15 out of 100? I mean, that'd be fail, right? To pass any paper, you need 50%. That's to pass the paper. To get to score an A, you need 80%. And here, God can only get one-seventh of the world's population to believe in Him. Fail, lah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> so we had, we had a good laugh for, about, about that too. He, uh, Kim Seng also asked about evolution. So if God didn't create um, Adam and Eve and all the um, animals and create the universe and the solar system, so um, we came from evolution. And the question he asked me is, how can evolution be true? Because they say that human beings came from monkeys. That, that's what he said. And he said, if we evolve from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? <laughs> yeah, that's a really easy answer to answer. Uh, that's a really easy question to answer. So I asked him back, I said, when you were born, did your parents suddenly die on the day you were born? So the answer is, of course, of course not. Lah. Well, the same thing. Lah. Evolution, just, it doesn't mean that that species will have to die out in order for a new species to begin. So if you look at the COVID-19 virus, that's of a few days ago, the big news is there is a Delta strain and this Delta strain of COVID-19 is a super spreader. And the effects of this particular virus that has evolved is worse than the other strains. Now, just because we got the Delta strain of COVID-19, it doesn't mean that the other strains of COVID-19 have suddenly died out or disappeared. It, doesn't quite work like that. In fact, all the other strains of COVID-19 are still around somewhere. And I explained to him that what really happened was human beings and the monkeys, uh, chimpanzees, for example, we came from a common ancestor. Now, it so happened that the common ancestor really died out. It uh, went extinct. It didn't have to go extinct, but it did. So since it did, so we don't have that. Hey, hey, you do remember me. <laughs> the two dogs do remember me. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, I was just telling you that we have a common ancestor and the ancestor did go ex extinct, unfortunately. So what we are left is us, us and uh, our cousins, and our cousins are the chimpanzees and the gorillas. So um, we are the byproduct, we are the evolved um, byproduct of that ancestor of ours. So not necessarily that you, your um, ancestor has to be extinct before you come about. Now, of course, if um, if you talk about survival of the fittest, usually the fittest species will survive and the, um, the weaker species will die off. Right? For instance, if you say um, long, long time ago, I don't know, let, let, let's, let's talk about today. Today, the cheetah is the fastest land uh, animal, the one for running. We're okay, talking about flying is a different um, animal. But uh, for running, it's the cheetah. So if you were to take the cheetah's um, evolution, you have to 
say that as the cheetah went backwards to its ancestors, it and it and its ancestor would probably have run slower than the present cheetah. Well, if the faster cheetah would go on to um, survive, while the slower cheetah would eventually just die off. So Kim Seng was just wondering, how come if we human beings are the dominant, so when our species came about, well, what happened to the um, the, the, the the our ancestor? So yeah. So anyway, <coughs> he doesn't yeah, not always lah. He doesn't always uh, die die off and die out and go extinct. Then he also commented, he said, have you noticed how some preachers ask for donations because they feel that they need to buy a private jet? And I, I, I told him, yeah, I just did a series of videos condemning those kinds of preachers who do not take care of um, the flock, uh, but they they are more interested in showing the world how God has blessed them, so to speak. Uh, in actual fact, what they are doing is just living off these um, easily manipulated church members who, uh, well, um, believe what they say. And it's quite unfortunate and quite sad that they would give money to pastors and um, for their for their greedy needs yeah. yeah so we talked also also a little bit about uh, Kong Hee in Singapore who went to jail but uh, eventually he was released uh, already so, um, Yeah, oh, another one. Yeah, while, while Kim Singh was asking me questions, I was, uh, and, and most of the questions were, were about the Bible. So I was very surprised that I, I could still remember a lot of my Bible uh, knowledge. I still retain a lot of my Bible knowledge. Um, we talked about how Jesus didn't write the Bible, and I, I think Kim, Kim Singh was quite surprised that Jesus didn't write the Bible <laughs> and um, even more surprised I think when I told him that three quarters of the New Testament was written by an, uh, a guy named Paul who never met Jesus as far as we know he never met Jesus if you read the Bible the Bible says that um, uh, Paul only met Jesus on the road to Damascus, I think, and uh, he met him like uh, like a a spirit. Uh, Jesus had already passed away at that time, and Paul had been going around to persecute the Christians, finding them and and arresting them and persecuting them. And then, uh, as the, as the Bible story says, he was blinded by light. And um, he heard a voice um, asking him, why are you persecuting me? And he took the voice as um, to be Jesus and then uh, he changed from one camp to the opposite. So, in so instead of persecuting the Christians, he became a Christian. And uh, as, as we all know, he became the, the greatest apostle. He contributed the most to Christianity, the spread of Christian, Christianity, and uh, also um, the the New Testament itself. So, yeah. So I think Kim Seng was quite surprised to learn that fact. And, and then we talked about the Trinity. Ah, so <laughs> Kim Seng wanted to know. He had heard of the word Trinity before, but he didn't quite understand uh, how the Bible came about this Trinity and. I have to say that it's a really interesting 
interesting topic, I suppose. And it, it's the weirdest topic. As I was explaining the, the concept of the Trinity to Kim Seng, I really found myself um, half laughing because I used to believe and accept that explanation wholesale. But as I was explaining it to Kim Seng, I, I actually found it to be quite humorous. So I told him that <clears throat> for the longest time, everybody thought that there was only one God. And well, it's also stated in um, the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. It's not thou shalt love thy thy Lord, the Lord, and your God. You know, meaning that there's more than one God. But there's only one God. He was called the Lord and he was called God. So interchangeable titles, but it's referring to the one true God. And then came Jesus. So Jesus himself proclaimed that he was God. Which was, so now you got two people in uh, who also who claims that they are of equal standing. Then in the book of Acts, I think it was Peter who proclaimed that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is also God. And this came from the story um, very early on in the book of Acts. The disciples, this is after Jesus had passed away, so the disciples got together with the followers of Jesus and they told them to sell their possessions and um, pool their money together. So all the disciples, uh, all the followers of Jesus, the Christians, uh, the early Christian Christians, did that. But there was one husband and wife who decided that they would keep back, retain. I think a plot of land and they they didn't sell it but when Peter asked is this all did you did you really sell off everything and brought it before us and and uh, the couple said uh, yeah this this is all that we have and we sold it all and this this is what we got and uh, Peter told the, the couple that you have not lied to us but you have actually lied to the Spirit Holy, you have lied to God. So that e equates the Holy Spirit as God. So now you have this problem where we all know Yahweh is God, God, God. And then there's Jesus who did not deny that He is not God um, and He demonstrated that he was God by referring to himself as God, by also performing miracles to show that he was God. And then you also have um, this spirit of God who is also God. So now you've got three gods, but you've always been told that there's only one God. So. You clearly have three gods, but there's, on the other hand, you also have to contend with the problem of there's only one God. So how do you, how do you reconcile or solve this interesting problem? So the way the uh, theologians do it is to <clears throat> say that there is a trinity, that the three are one and the one are three. Now. When I was told this many, many years ago, I just accepted it as, as it is, as fact. It didn't cross my mind back then that this is not logical or even strange. But to Kim Seng, to him, it was strange, it was ridiculous, and it just didn't work for, for him. Yeah, but not, not for me. <clears throat> for me, I'm like, yeah, sure. Hey. What do you mean? You've forgotten me already? <laughs> I 
So, <laughs> I don't know. Back then, I suppose I was um, different. Lah. Um, I don't regret <clears throat> being a Christian, I have to say. But um, I, don't, I don't regret um, being, not being a Christian either. Lah. Um, and I think that um, I just a different phase of my life and um, I, I don't I don't believe these things anymore lah. and as I was explaining explaining these things to Kim Seng giving the point of view of the Bible and then uh, you know my point of view so it um, reinforced the reinforced my stand that I don't believe in God. It, um, yeah, it acted as a like a check and balance for me. I thought that thought was quite interesting. We, yeah, another thing that uh, Kim Seng asked was about Moses and uh, how we talked about how he got the Ten Commandments, and so we talked about how he had gone up to heaven. Uh, sorry to. Oh yeah, I know. I know where that came from. She, she's, um, Kim Seng started to say there must be God because <clears throat> how else would they have built the pyramids? You know, the stones are so are cut, so exact that they fit each other without gap. And and uh, how did you build such huge pyramids without any cranes? computers and whatnot. Well, um, up until a few, few years ago, we could only speculate as to how the Egyptians built the pyramids. And <clears throat> I remember when I was growing, growing up, the pyramids were one of those mysterious things. But we now live in the 21st century and we now know exactly how the pyramids were built. To get the stones up to the top of the pyramid, you just had to build ramps. So all you had to do is you build a long ramp. If the ramp is long, then the incline is very um, low. The, has a low incline. Whereas if if the ramp is short, you get this really sharp in incline. So you know move a very heavy block of stone so you build a very long and low incline so you can just easily push it up you what you do what you lose is you lose uh, in terms of distance so you got to push it further lah. but um yeah if you if the incline is long enough you can actually get it up to the top of the uh, pyramid and then what you do is you just destroy the incline lah, take it away and what you're left is the pyramid. How do you get all the stones so accurately carved and chipped away? Well, mad people had mad back then. They had instruments. They could build their own. They could make their own instruments. They had uh, tools already. The Egyptians were good scientists. So you just had to use your own uh, ingenu- ingenuity. And when you got thousands upon thousands of workers working on the pyramid, then the, the work becomes easier. If you said that it was built by ten fellows, then yeah, you would have to ask how did those that ten jokers get all the stones up to the top of the pyramid? But it's uh, it's no. Now we know that. The, the, the pyramid was uh, just a marvel of human achievement. It's what something somebody ancient would would be able to do. If you if you if you want to be impressed, then we should have found a computer in the pyramid. Now that would be impressive, you know, a computer that could calculate um, things. That that would that would be impressive, um, or a or a radio, uh, that would be impressive. Or 
an aeroplane. That would be impressive, you know. But there isn't. Everything that we found in the pyramid is exactly the kind of things that we expect to find in the pe- that time that time period. So I told him, well, uh, people say that uh, Moses also uh, encountered a miracle when he went up to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. Because when he went up to the mountain, he had nothing with him. But when he came down, he had two tablets. And on the tablets were engraved the Ten Commandments. So, who engraved it when he went up with nothing? So, they say, well, um, when, I was in, when I was a Christian, I used to believe that God had lasered <laughs> the Ten Commandments onto the stone. So, there was no tools used. Yeah, I used to believe that kind of thing. What to do? I wasn't very smart back then. <clears throat> then we talked about um, the Bible. Um, I told him I've got a friend. His name is Pakun, and he once told me. He said, if the Bible is so better, or, um, you know, it's really the Word of God. Why didn't, why didn't it have something like really important in the Bible? Like there's some, something that, um, that you find in the Bible that there's no way an ancient person could know. For instance, the periodic, periodic table that contains all the elements found on earth or the universe for that matter. So, can you imagine if um, the periodic table who was found um, in the Bible? Like, you write down the periodic table and all the gases that there are, the hydrogen and carbon dioxide and uh, so, sorry, carbon and helium and argon and xenon and whatever. Lah. And then, God tells you, hey, look, I know you guys find this really hard to believe, but take it easy, cool, because sometime in the 20th century, you guys will be able to prove that there are these elements found on Earth. And you know why I know these elements are found on Earth? Because what is it? Because I'm God and I created all the elements. So obviously, I know all the elements that are found on the, on Earth. But, what do we find in the Bible? We don't find any of these things. In fact, the Bible actually contains some scientific errors. One error is uh, people used to think that the sun went around the Earth. Well, why did they think that? Because every morning Sesat jalan lah You sesat jalan lah you are the okay. Thought he was lost. So, where was I? Yeah, the the um, yeah regarding the periodic table, right? Yeah. So, um, the yeah, the sun are going around the earth well because every morning they saw the sun rise from one side of the of the horizon and it will always go down on the opposite side so logically it looked like the sun is the one that's moving across the sky right well who would have guessed that it's actually the earth spinning on its axis that makes our day and night who would have guessed that well god but unfortunately 
that fact is not found in the Bible. <laughs> in fact, in the Old Testament, Moses actually stopped the sun from going across the sky. But when we know now that the sun doesn't move across the sky, it is our earth that stops spinning. Now, why didn't God tell the writer, whoa, 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 that, uh, you made a mistake there. Don't say that Moses made the sun stop in the sky because actually the sun doesn't, does not move at all. It is the earth that stops spinning. And therefore, it looks as though, it looks as though the sun had stopped moving. Now, that would have been mind-blowing. Imagine a book that was written 2,000 years ago stating a really non-obvious fact. Want to know who I told Kim Seng said? Do you want to know who found out that the earth was a sphere and not flat? It was the Greeks, not the Christians. Why not? <laughs> you guys pray to God, right? Yeah. How come Christians pray to God or, or the people of God, they pray to God, but they are not told these kinds of, of um, given these kinds of hidden knowledge. Hmm? Reveal. Huh? Why, why, why didn't you reveal these things and all the people? And so that, yeah, you know, how, how cool would that be if we... If Christians or people of God prayed to God and God told them fact after fact after fact, and then they would just come and say, you know, the Lord just told me that we don't just breathe the air, we are only breathing oxygen. This thing, that there's only one fifth in the air. Everything else we don't need. We don't need nitrogen, we don't need carbon dioxide, every other gas that we can that we breathe in is just useless to us. We only need oxygen. That's not found in the Bible. That's not even a revelation given by God to any of his faithful servants. But it would be would have been awesome if God had done such a thing. Now, when after I stopped being a Christian, I used to also ask these questions and just so you know, the answers are um, God works in mysterious ways. That's a verse in the, in the Bible. So we don't know God's great plan. Well, I think after you know, if, when, when I was a Christian, I would have just accepted that answer and just, and just uh, thought, yeah lah, you know, who are we to question God? But then, now that I'm not a Christian, so I actually thought that that was a half, half-baked half answer lah. Like, you know, um, it's a bit like your children asking you a question which you cannot answer, and then you say, ah yeah, why, why are you guys always disturbing me? Always, uh, you know, uh, asking stupid questions. No, the, if the child wants to know uh, something and you don't know, you should just say you don't know. Lah. And um, if you like, you should just say, let's find out together so that you can learn something and your child can also learn something. But here, when, when these kinds of questions are asked um, in church or to the pastor and the pastor cannot explain it, then the pastor will just say, um, well, God moves in mysterious ways. We don't know what God is uh, thinking. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've also had um, people who told me, uh, by the way, Jesus also doesn't know everything that uh, God knows. Like for instance, the second coming of uh, Christ. Even Christ doesn't know the hour nor the day. <laughs> His own return, he doesn't know. But he, my father and I are one. They are one, but he is minus a little bit. Lah. <laughs> yeah.
Anyway, I think I think that's all I can remember from our talk. We we, we talked about um, other things as well. Uh, yeah, now now that I'm telling you this this story, I have to say that I'm I'm still quite amazed that I've remembered a lot of my Bible knowledge, and uh, I could actually tell him saying the uh, Bible stories <laughs> that he was asking me, you know, to give him a proper answer and to give him uh, to frame the answer so that he has got some background information um, regarding the, the the question that he was uh, asking me. Okay lah, I think I've stashed stop my old beliefs enough. So if you like my videos, please give me a stop my video. And if you've got a comment, please, you're welcome to leave a comment for me. And I will see you in the next Mustache Music.